Welcome back to the channel. My name is Wajaha and this is, I believe, is episode seven of the Zero to Six Figure Challenge. In this episode, we're going to talk about two things. Number one, the recent USDC peg and number two, the upcoming Arbitrum airdrop, which I'm sure many of you watching are excited about. For those of you new here, I make a lot of videos about DeFi and I've been going on and on and on about Arbitrum and the Arbitrum airdrop. Just have a look at my channel. I've mentioned it many, many times. So for those of you who have been following and watching, congrat congratulations, because you probably have made or are about to make quite a substantial amount of money. Uh, the Arbitrum airdrop was announced v relatively recently and I think most people are probably going to make four figures, maybe five for those of you who have been farming quite substantially. So yeah, let's jump into the portfolio. Currently at a valuation of $5,706. We're about 55% up. We've made some changes and we have sold out of some uh, positions and also added uh, in various other, other places as well. Um, what have we done here? Well, surprisingly, I still have USDC in the portfolio. I didn't touch it, didn't sell, it, didn't capitulate. Um, yes, it was a very scary time to be honest because I've been there before. My <laughs> was completely wrecked uh, with the UST DPEG that happened um, in 2022. Um, the Lunar UST collapse, again, I've got videos on my channel, but yeah, that wiped out most of my net worth, uh, sadly. Uh, and so I kind of know what the feeling is like when your stable coin is going down. Now, thankfully in this portfolio, I don't have too much exposure to USDC, but I mean, with USDC being pretty much everything on chain, uh, especially in DeFi, it's the stable coin of DeFi, to be honest. Um, it was very scary. Um, and I think, yes, we were kind of reassured that uh, the kind of Fed would step in and kind of save SVB and kind of all these other banks as well. Um, but, you know, there always was that uncertainty. It wasn't 100% guaranteed. And I, I think because of that, did actually raise some questions in my head about which stable coins should we be using? Should we be using stable coins like USDC and USDT, which have their reserves in banks? Banks can be a point of failure and we've seen it just in the last couple of weeks really can, you know, what actually can happen. It is quite scary uh, and it did actually get me thinking about, you know, which other types of stable coins should, be, should we be using. Uh, as soon as the, the DPEG event did happen, I did write a, a couple of issues in my newsletter. Uh, here's one of them, 90 cents for the price of $1, which I basically talk about kind of what happened to USDC and how it did DPEG. Uh, and then I did write a, a second issue about kind of why stable coins fail, um, of course, uh, UST failed, BUSD is having its own issues at the moment, and of course, USDC had its issues. Of course, DAI and FRAX also depegged. Uh, so overall, in the whole stablecoin market, it was a disaster. Uh, and in this issue, um, I'll leave a link in the description. Go and subscribe to me as well, it's free. Uh, and I just write free articles from time to time, so go and watch, but I, I go and have a read. I did write about uh, a few different types of stablecoin concepts that could probably work uh, and kind of avoid the issues that we've had recently. One of them being, uh, you know, stablecoin providers having custody, self-custody. Uh, we've talked about, and I, and I talked about how FRAX are trying to do so with the FMA, a federal, uh, uh, master account, Fed master account. Uh, and we talked about kind of non fiat based stable coins like, you know, the LUSD, the potential for Curve USD, which is coming pretty soon, um, you know, redacted cartel and dinero, uh, and decentralized reserve currencies like OM. And I am uh, currently working on a video for you guys talking about OM because I think uh, it's an interesting model for kind of stable coins or, or stable assets anyway. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much USDC. USDC did regain its peg eventually, but I mean, it was a kind of scary time. And I think uh, it does, I think in the entire industry has raised a lot of questions about what we are going to do in future uh, with the stablecoin market. Um, so yeah, it's going to be interesting. Um, so yeah, we'll kind of see what happens and I'll try and update you as more things come out. What am I doing personally? Well, I'm still holding on to USDC, but I am, you know, hyper aware of um, the kind of issues that these do come with. And so I am going to start adding other stable coins to kind of diversify and kind of kind of reduce my risk. I think the other thing that this has shown is that Bitcoin does have a purpose. Um, as a reserve, uh, I think <laughs> it's definitely opened my eyes to that a little bit more. And perhaps I will start to maybe accumulate some. Who knows? Uh, I haven't got any plans to do so just yet, but it's something that I do need to think about a little bit more regarding how to kind of go forward from this. Uh, I'm going to spend some time, really do some deep thinking about it. Um, of course, because USDC uh, depegged, FRAX depegged, that resulted in FXS taking a little haircut and you can see now that it's trading at just around $8. 
Uh, whereas at one point recently, this was you know almost 50% higher at $13. So yeah, uh, that has kind of come down, but you know we have been slowly adding uh, with some USDC. So we have been able to kind of offset that. And that's why the portfolio isn't down as you should say, but I think overall as a net percentage up, we are slightly down. Uh, so yeah, Frax, our position is worth a lot less. I think this was definitely in the four figure profit. So yeah, it's gone down a fair amount. Um, and yeah, uh, some of the other alts are doing okay, redacted, um, stuff like that. We have sold out of um, the handle finance governance token. Um, and we'll talk about that in a moment as well. So pretty much the rest of the portfolio is relatively unchanged other than the fact that we've added a few more Lyra um, and uh, some USDC as well. And uh, I do have uh, quite a few more coins that we want to add to the portfolio. So hopefully you'll see them over the next few episodes as well. Um, yes, let's, the second thing that we wanted to talk about in this episode was to do with Arbitrum. Now tomorrow the Arbitrum airdrop is coming to everyone and I'm so excited because I'm eligible for it and I hope that many of you guys watching are eligible for it too because it's going to be worth a fair amount in my opinion. I personally think that Arbitrum should be worth at least the level that Optimism is trading at and I think that does give Arbitrum the token probably a value of around one dollar. So I don't know if it's going to be higher, it could be lower, it could be higher, who knows, we'll find out tomorrow. Um, and uh, obviously that's going to mean that the portfolio is going to get a little bit of a boost because hopefully it should be worth a fair amount. Um, and uh, there's a few different ways to play it. You know, are people going to hold? Are they going to dump? Are they going to kind of buy? We'll have to wait and see. I think what we've found with previous airdrops, especially with the likes of Blur, Aptos, um, Optimism as well, is that generally at the start they do pump quite uh, significantly in a short period of time. I'm talking hours to days max uh, before kind of significant sell pressure reducing the price. Um, thereafter kind of having a range of accumulation before going up again. The question is, is this going to happen to Arbitrum? I don't know, but I think everyone needs to kind of make a plan regarding what they're going to do. I think for me personally, and I'll just be transparent about it, if Arbitrum does go to two, three, four, five dollars, I'm definitely selling out of it completely. I think uh, in this market, and uh, you know, just given the circumstances that we're in at the moment, as well as the fact that I think at those kind of valuations, especially at, you know, a $5 Arbitrum token, you, you know, you're really talking about a 50 billion FDV. Um, could Arbitrum eventually get there in future? I think absolutely it probably could do, but I think for the time being, I think that would be slightly overvalued in my opinion. And I think because of that, I'm, I think the, the risk reward for me is probably better off uh, buying more Ethereum or, or maybe just holding some stable coins. Uh, I don't know, that's just my opinion at the end of the day. So we'll have to wait and see. Like I said, I could be completely wrong and it could be higher, it could be lower. Um, I think if Arbitrum is trading below $1, I'd probably hold on to it. Uh, and that's because I think uh, long term wise anyway, or even in the next few months, I think Arbitrum is probably intrinsically worth a little bit more than that. But of course, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, there's so many different predictions on Twitter about what's going to happen. So, um, it's going to be an exciting time. Um, now, the question about why I sold Handle um, is that I don't think that it's going to be an Arbitrum narrative as such. Um, once the token is out, rather I think it's going to be more of a sell the news event. And I actually think that many of these Arbitrum altcoins have performed quite well already. Multiple Xs, we've seen uh, the likes of GMX, Dopex and various other Arbitrum alts perform very well. So yeah, uh, I'm not so sure that we're going to see um, you know, significant liquidity coming in. If we do, fair enough. Uh, look, I'm happy to take profits and uh, you know, I closed in a profit. I was able to farm as well on top of that. So it's happy days for me. Um, I'm not too concerned and I'm not too worried. So yeah, I've been taking some profit, but I'm also adding in various other areas. So that's pretty much my plan for the Arbitrum airdrop. Hopefully I'll show you a video, well, I'll have some videos uh, in future regarding how that's going to affect the portfolio, hopefully going up. Uh, uh, and of course, kind of things that happen in the Arbitrum ecosystem as I've got many, many videos on already as well. So we'll have to wait and see for that. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much the story with USDC and stablecoins. So that's where we are, um, $5,724 as of this video. Stay tuned, hopefully in the, or hopefully, I really, I really do pray that we can get to the five figure mark fairly soon. You know, I'm hoping in the next month or so, 
Maybe if the Arbitrum token goes really well, then we can get there in a week. Who knows? Let's see. Stay tuned. I'll have plenty more content in the near future. Subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to my newsletter. Go and subscribe here. It's literally completely free. And I have really cool or really helpful, I, I hope anyway, uh, issues like Farms of the Month where I talk about all the different stablecoin farmings. Look, here's February's edition. Here's March's edition. Of course, we're getting close to April. So April's edition is going to come pretty soon. And I do write about a variety of topics. Some, some, sometimes my deep dive, sometimes different resources. You'll find stuff on here that I think will benefit you. Uh, and of course, it's free for now. Uh, here is my portfolio. That's all I've got for you today. Make sure you smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and of course, I'll be back with plenty more content in the near future.